Hi everyone, David Aragona here taking a look at the feature race at Kentucky Downs on Saturday. It is the Windstar Mint Million Stakes, a grade three event with a $1 million purse going a mile on that European style turf course at Kentucky Downs going as race 10 and approximate post time of 6.31 p.m. Eastern time. And we've got a field of nine signed on for this race. Let's throw up the runners in this one and seems pretty wide open. The number three pixelate is the tepid morning line favorite at five to two over the number nine a tone at seven to do both of those horses are coming off narrow losses in their most recent starts we'll talk about each of them in just a little bit but it does seem like there are a few horses in this race that want to be forwardly placed among them horses like the number one tuts revenge perhaps the number four gray's fable who we'll talk about more in just a little bit and kind of an intriguing runner in this race the number eight injunction who is switching back over to the turf for the first time since his career debut a horse that has shown a lot of speed on the dirt course. We'll see how that translates to the turf, and we'll take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector. Speaking of the pace of this race, and that number eight injunction is shown up close to the front end, pressing the pace. It is the long shot, though, the number five, bet with both hands, that's shown on the early lead. Perhaps a little tough to make a case for this one as a win candidate, but you would imagine he's going to go forward from his uh, middle draw here. He has done his best running when he's up on the front end, so we'll see how some of the others that are drawn around him react to potential aggressive tactics from that one. Let's take a look at some of the last races of the main contenders, beginning with Pixelate, uh, when he came off the layoff last time at Laurel and just missed in a stakes race there. That is him in those blue Godolphin silks in behind runners. And you can see he's in a little bit of traffic right here, probably has to wait a little bit too long before angling out, but he does kind of have the Red Seas part from at the eighth pole right there, and he has room to come through now, and it briefly looks like he might actually get the job done, but those two runners to the outside, they just maintain their edge coming onto the wire and pixelate, just hanging a little bit coming off the layoff, finishing third in that listed stakes race. A solid effort there, 112 time form US speed figure. He's going to have to improve a little bit on that second off the layoff. He's going to be successful here, but what he does have going for him is he has previously won over this quirky Kentucky Downs course, and he actually did so when he won this race last year uh, in 2021. He was a two and a half length winner. You can see that five back at the bottom of his time form US VPs when he got a 120 21 time form US speed figure that day, beating a pretty good horse in some like it hot brown. So if Pixlake can get back to that form and does receive some pace to close into, I think he's going to be pretty dangerous in this race. And I have no argument with anybody who says he is simply the horse to beat. The number nine, Atone, another horse that could take some money in this race. Let's take a look at his last race at Saratoga when he just missed. And he is coming into the stretch in those uh, turquoise and yellow Three Diamonds Farm blinkers. You can see him kind of on the rail towards the back of the pack there. Doesn't look like he's going to get anywhere near uh, possibly winning this race at mid-stretch, but he finally gets to the outside right there and is going to come with a rush to just miss finishing third here by a head. This was a pretty frustrating loss for backers of a tone. He was the favorite that day, coming off some pretty solid tries in graded stakes company in his prior starts. Uh, was only beaten the length in the grade one makers mark mile earlier in this year. Uh, finished a good second in the Forbidden Apple 2 back at Saratoga. So this horse has just been in great form recently for trader Mike Maker. Hasn't had many wins lately, but I think that's primarily due to the company being kept. And he is a really good fit in this race just from a class standpoint. One reservation I do have, though, is Mike Maker, I think, has a bit of a reputation as a kind of trainer who can be a little bit sneaky and get runners to win at Kentucky Downs. But when you look at the stats, it paints a slightly different picture. We'll take a look at a, a deer, a formulator fact for Mike Maker in this race over the past five years at Kentucky Downs in stakes races he is just six for 78 with eight percent win rate with a 55 cent ROI so has not had a whole lot of success in races like this at Kentucky Downs at least in recent years so maybe a little bit uh, of a reason to be skeptical of a tone but based on form he's definitely one to consider in this race let's take a look at a race at Ellis Park that a few of these are all coming out of and that was uh, the Williams Turf Mile won by Gray's Fable. He is actually that gray horse down towards the inside, right in mid-pack there, and kind of amazing he's going to win this race given where he is in mid-stretch. A couple of others also coming out of this race, the Tut's Revenge and Mr. Duma, and they're all going to hit the wire together, and you could see Gray's Fable, that flashy gray, coming through with a rush in the final eighth of a mile to get up on the wire. 
this was kind of a surprising win for Gray's Fable, not just because he was 10 to 1, but also because he won coming from off the pace. And that really has not been his running style historically. He's been a horse that has done his best uh, running when he's up on the front end. And they uh, adapted his style to come from off the pace last time, and it actually worked for him. So you'd imagine they'll try similar tactics here. So potentially that could take some speed out of the race if they do elect to rate Gray's Fable again. Ran well last time. If he can recapture that form here, I think he's a major player, but he's never been the most reliable sort, though perhaps that's some, some have been doing him getting caught up in fast paces when he was setting the pace in some prior starts. And this new adaptability that he's got to his running style could potentially add some consistency to his arsenal. The other horse coming out of that race worth considering is the number six, Mr. Duma. Uh, don't really have a major knock against this horse's recent form. You can see his speed figures are competitive and fairly consistent. He did run really well to win that stakes at Canterbury two back. Not facing the toughest field that day, but he was pretty visually impressive in victory. And you saw that replay he just missed in that Ellis Park turf stakes last time. Looked like he had worked out a great trip under Rayla Gutierrez, but just could not hold off that late rush from Gray's Fable. He's definitely one to consider in this race. Just think he's moving up slightly in class here to face uh, some older classy runners that uh, could make it a little bit tougher for him. But he's a horse that I would not fault anybody for having in the mix. One more horse that I do want to take a look at is the number two, Cavalry Charge. Let's take a look at his race two back at Horseshoe Indianapolis when he just missed to the classy Ivar. Ivar is a really grade two, grade one caliber horse. So no, uh, uh, you know, nothing to be disgraced about getting run down by that one. And I actually thought the Cavalry Charge battles on pretty gamely between horses actually getting past some like it hop round for second this day. Uh, some like it hop round did come out of this race uh, to two back to uh, two starts forward when an off the turf race at Saratoga in his next start. He's actually been in pretty decent form lately. And uh, Cavalry Charge earned a nice 119 time from US speed figure. Uh, for his last race when he was running at Churchill Downs, a 120 for the race two back that we just talked about. Those are two of the best numbers coming in here. And you can see all of that red in his PPs. He's been involved in a few fast paced races and that's just a difficult thing for a horse that wants to be forwardly placed. But what I do like in that race two back was that he did show the ability to rate effectively. Got a good trip that day, but I thought that he showed some nice versatility to his running style that I think will serve him well here as he again draws an inside post position. And I just think he's been in deceptively strong form for a little while now despite those seemingly inconsistent results coming in and he figures to be a decent price in this race let's throw my picks for this race and you can see i did put that number two cavalry charge on top another reason to like this horse that i uh, just forgot to mention was that there is some rain predicted uh, in kentucky downs on saturday we'll see if that holds true i'm recording this two days ahead of time but cavalry charge is not a horse that minds a little bit of given the ground so that could potentially aid him and he's six to one in the morning line i think that's a fair price on him i do have the logical pixelate in for second as well as a toe in for third no real knocks against them though i did have that negative mike maker stat just preferred the bigger price of cavalry charge in the windstar mint million stakes at Kentucky Downs on Saturday. Good luck if you're playing the races this weekend.